In this lesson, we're going to be looking at defining translations. So let's take a look at this notice and wonder. It's on page 82 in your student workbook. So spend a couple minutes um, looking at it, noticing some things, wondering, pause the video, come back, and I'll talk through a few things. So some things that people noticed on here was um, different colors, blue and yellow. We've got two triangles. They look like they're the same size. One has um, the vertices labeled, another one doesn't. Saw this vector off to the side or this um, line segment with an arrow on it labeled V. Wondered about why is that there? Does it have something to do with these triangles and one starting here and one being here? Not an exhaustive list, could have wondered um, or noticed some other things in there too. Uh, so we're gonna look in 12.2 on page 83 in your student workbook at exploring translations without that triangle grid in the background or without even an X, Y axis. So taking a look here on page 83, it says after a translation, the image V is tran um, the after a translation, the image of V is W. So V is the starting point, W is the ending point. Okay, so after a translation, V moved to W. Find some other points in this diagram that do the same thing, that take the same translation as V to W did. At least three, okay? There's going to be more, but here's a couple. So are you noticing some? Putting them in maybe a different color in your notebook. Again, a lot of those. And then write at least one conjecture about translations. So looking at each of these. So write at least one thing about what you're noticing. Maybe it's that these look like they're parallel to each other. Okay, that's something that somebody said in class about just guessing. Will these translations be parallel to each other? How will this work? Um, so now in a new translation of V, um, the image of V is Z. So V actually goes to Z. Okay, so now V is translating to Z. So label at least three other times where this happened. Oops, moved that one, okay. So are your conjectures still true? So mine was that I they look parallel to each other. So the translation, when you connect the image to the pre-image, look like they're going to be run parallel to each other. And that is holding true in this one as well. All right, so that um, directed line segment, because a vector is actually like it has a specific length, right? So it is the length from A to B. It stays the same in all of those. The arrow is just showing you which way the point is moving, in this case, up and to the left, okay? Um, so A is translating to B along this directed line segment, also called a vector. All right, so looking at activity 12.3, let's look at translating triangles. So we're actually going to look at this in your activity applet on LearnZillion. So if you will go and open that from Schoology, get your lesson 12 LearnZillion slides open. And this is on card 11, so you can just arrow through until you get to card 11, and that will get you this applet. So reading in the book, it says translate triangle ABC by the directed line segment from A to C. So again, directed starts at A, goes in the direction of C. So this line segment right here. Okay, so we want to translate all of these points using this directed line segment.
I could get it to give me another one here. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to just translate each of those points. So B is going to go this far to its image. A is going to go this far to its image. C is going to go this far. So then that will get us our new triangle. Now, that would be great if you had something like that in your notebook that you could just do that and come up with that new triangle. So that's what we're going to be doing in the applet. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to translate by a vector. Okay, like we've done before. So you're going to take this image and translate by a vector. So let's see if we can draw the vector on here. Okay, so we're just going to grab that image. And remember, the vector was A to C. So I just moved A to C, and that'll get me my new triangle there. So let's take a look again. Um, so you can click, because mine didn't show a vector the first time, so let's look at it again. So if I pick vector, pick the shape, okay, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Hang on, let's get rid of this. All right, let's go translate by a vector. Okay, so now I selected the shape and then we're gonna go A to C and then it'll draw on that vector. I'm just gonna delete this out because I still have those primes. So let's try one more time here. So click translate by vector, click the shape, there we go. Okay, click the shape and then click A to C and it'll move it. And then you need to copy this into your student workbook, which is gonna be a little bit harder because you're not gonna have, you're obviously not gonna be able to construct it or do it like I did here where you can actually make sure you get those exact vectors on. What we did in class is then we took some tracing paper. Okay, so you can extend this, you can extend this line so we can lay um, our straight edge down and extend this line here so that we've got a line that goes in the same direction. So we know we're moving along this bottom segment. We traced the paper and then just moved it down to get our triangle on. So just do the best you can in your student workbook. All right, so then um, how does the length of BC compare to B prime, C prime? So how does the length from here to here, so B to C, compare to B prime, C prime? Okay, so rigid transformation, so those should be exactly the same. So B to C should be the same as B prime to C prime. Um, and then what's the, sorry, what's the relationship between lines B, C and B prime, C prime? So this line here, so B prime, C prime, or sorry, B, C. So this line compared to this line, B prime, C prime. So what's the relationship between those two blue lines? So parallel. So translation moves parallel to itself. All right, then translate segment DE by the directed line segment W. Okay, so now we're going to move D and E this same direction here. Okay, so we're going to move it E to here and D to here. And then we'll be able to connect those. Whoops, I have an arrow on mine. So connect E prime to D prime. So this would be where our new E or our E prime was and this would be where D prime was. Okay, so looking at the applet so then we're going to translate by vector this segment by this vector. So it's already drawn there. So then we can see it'll just move it right over. Again, going to be a little bit harder on your student workbook to make sure that you do it correctly. Um, so as you try and draw this line, just make sure it's parallel here. All right, then... Um, how do we know that they're parallel? Okay, so how do we know that these two lines were parallel? Again, because our translations move the shape parallel to its image and it's the original figure to its pre-image. How do we know they have the same length? Because it's a rigid transformation. All right, so here's some um, vocab to fill in on your vocab chart. 
So we've got translation, that's just a type of transformation that moves each point of a figure in the same direction. Okay, it's kind of like a slide and it moves it in the direction generally of a vector that we see a directed segment. So we're just gonna move A to A prime, this direction, this length. So the original and we've got the image. Then we've got this parallel postulate. So given line M, point A that's not on the line, there's exactly one line parallel to M that goes through A. So we can't find any other lines parallel to M that also go through A. Parallel to M, sure. Okay, you can get other lines parallel to M, but none that will also go through A. And then a translation takes lines to parallel lines or to themselves. Okay, so it will take a translation will create from the original line another parallel line. So if we're going to pick up and translate this by a vector, the original line and the image line will be parallel to each other. And then the symbol for parallel is these two lines that look like look parallel. So we'd say line M parallel to M prime. And then on a diagram, we also have the arrows on the lines that mean parallel. So on a diagram, you'd see the arrows written out, you'd see M parallel to M prime like this. So then you also have your lesson summary um, in your student workbook that you can read through remembering everything that we talked about in the lesson, looking at moving by directed segments, that the directed lines will be parallel to each other, moving an image an original shape to a an image. Okay, C to C prime, D to D prime, E to E prime, those will be the same length as the directed segment as well as parallel to them. Your learning targets for this lesson were that you could describe a translation by stating the directed line segment and drawing translations.